I have a project share. Well, actually, this is another this is another project steal. <laughs> um, I stole this one from Diane. So um, you need to go over to her YouTube channel and see how it's done right because she she has a really cool one. It's um, she's pack or die here on YouTube and she has a video for an envelope journal that she made and she has all the links and everything for where she got her ideas and inspiration so you can go back and see how others have done it and um, but I got I got my inspiration from her but I changed it up just a little bit um, she had used some envelopes that she got from the office supply they were, I think, you know, just the 9 by 12 envelopes, the, the white ones, and then the 6 by 9 envelopes. And you fold them and put them together to make a little Z-fold signature. Well, I didn't want to go buy envelopes because I got envelopes off the wazoo from junk mail, right? So I was kind of devised my own little junk mail version of her book. And this is what I came up with. I've got... Uh, I ended up with five signatures and it's just bound with a, a long stitch and then this thing is um, bound through the middle. I may end up putting a buckle or something on this instead of tying it. I don't know. I haven't really decided what I'm going to do about that. Um, and this was just a scrap of paper that I stuck to a piece of painted, I mean a scrap of fabric that I stuck to a piece of painted paper. And these are the signatures. And she's going to use hers. I think she mentioned that she's going to do a lot of personal journaling in hers. And then also maybe some collage uh, techniques or, or, you know, art journaling things. And I think what I really want to do with mine is um, kind of more of a collage book. Um, not so much a lot of wet media, but more more dry media, more cut and paste, because I really like doing that. I don't, I really don't think I do it often enough. So I, that's what my intention is anyway. And each signature is um, an envelope with an enclosure, and I just used some junk mail postcards and cut them so that they would fit in the envelope. So it's got a pocket there. Here's another pocket here. You open it up. It's got a fold out. It's got a flap and another pocket here. And this is what happens when you're really not feeling well <laughs> and you try to do something and you're not you're not really tracking too good. <laughs> um, I cut these before I bound it and I cut every one of them upside down. This little slot was supposed to go up here so that this would pull out the top. Um, I cut every single one of them upside down. So, you know, I've got this thin strip that I can use for a collage journal something. And I'm going to pretend that it it's supposed to come out the bottom like that, and I'm perfectly fine with it, because I'm kind of locked in now. <laughs> so, um, you know what? Maybe... Maybe fate knew that I needed that to slide out the bottom for some reason. I, I don't know what that reason would be. But you know what? I'm good with it. We have what we have. And we're just, we're just going to go with it. So that's all this is. These are, um, I did kind of like, um, Diane's binding is a little bit different than mine. I think it's still a long stitch. Um, but we both did, you know, each signature is bound um, separately which um, is good because it makes it easier if you need to remove one or add one. Um, it's much easier to do that way. It's a little more tedious because you do have to, you know, you have to cut a new piece of thread and, and sew for each one you, instead of just continuing on to the next signature. But you can bind it in, you know, pretty much any way you want, any kind of a stitched binding. And this is how the signatures look, mine anyway, you um, go to Packer Dye's channel and look at how she did hers, look at the real one, and then mine might make a little bit more sense after you see 
hers because hers is large and white and it's very easy to see how everything is put together. And mine's put together very similarly, but it just, it's funky looking because my envelopes are different sizes. So here's what I did. I started with a, an envelope this size. I had five of them and these, I think I got all of these from, uh, I think they were all sent from Karen in uh, Sweden. She sent me some awesome Swedish stuff. And she had several of these envelopes this size, which I don't really get a lot of at home. But I had this extra one. So it starts out with this size. And the first thing I do is find, just this is like a, a number 10 envelope or maybe slightly smaller it's one of those enclosure envelopes like you get with your um, you know your uh, bills we need to pay your bills and what I did was I put it in here okay wait I have to think I have to remember how I did it okay I have to look how I did it because <laughs> I've totally forgotten <laughs> uh, 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 uh. oh yeah okay and we like this I knew what I was doing. Okay. Took my business size envelope, tucked the flap inside the open end of my larger envelope, just like that. I glued, I didn't glue the flap to the front of the envelope because that would have put me a flap here and one back there and I wanted them kind of opposite of each other. So I put the glue on this part and glued it to the back of this envelope. So it's glued down like that, so I've got a flap here and a flap here. Does that make sense? And on some of them, if this came up right at the fold, I just took a little, I traced around the edge of a roll of tape and just cut out a notch so that I could grab hold of stuff. Um, so that's what I did there. So there we go. You glue those two together. Then you, if you pull your envelope back this way, you have this excess. Fold it under because this is going to be the width of your little book. And then, see so we got here, we got here. You turn it to the back side like that. And okay, let me look over here to make sure I remember how I did it. Uh huh, okay. I just took these smaller envelopes, these are those, you know, check size envelopes, I guess, personal envelopes. Glued the flap down right here, like that, so that this opens, this opens, and I've got the full thing there. And that's all there is to it. And there's that one, that one, that one. You know, you just got little got little pockets and flaps all over the place. So that's that's all there is to it. And basically you can just take you a handful of whatever envelopes you have and start piecing them together. See how they fit together. They don't really even have to be all the same as long as the outside one is the same because it makes it easier for binding. But as far as what you put, you know, in here, um, you've just, you've got options. There's just, um, Lots of things you can do. And I decided, you know, on this little folded flap, uh, it's, you know, a good flap for putting little art things on, but I wanted to notch it out and slide something skinny in it. So that's why I cut out this, which you will want to pay attention to make sure that you do it on the, on the end that you want. I didn't realize this was the end that I wanted, but apparently it was. So that's all it is super simple you know you've got little pullouts I use more junk mail for my pullouts and there you go I did run a little piece of artist tape along the edge where I was binding just to give it a little bit of extra support because you know this paper's thin um, I was afraid it might pull through so you can just put a little piece of duct tape or even just masking tape will help to um, help it to not pull through. And that's it. And then this I just kind of, you know, 
figured it out as I went because I don't sew. I just did my best to stitch those together. So there's what I've got and I'm really excited about using this. I'm, I don't really know where to start so I'm hoping that Diane will do some videos of hers when she you know starts getting it going so that I'll know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> so there we have it. Um, that's it. I have one more little thing I've been playing with and destroying. This is what happens when I try to to do art stuff when I'm not really feeling well. I, we got a new phone book the other day and it's this little size right here that I've used before. It's just perfect size for a journal or a book. So I went through the phone book. I cut out some of the pages. Um, the rest of them started gluing them together in little wads, you know, just random. And started gessoing not paying any attention to the fact that the glue was still wet between the pages. The gesso was still wet on this page and I was just turning pages over and laying them on each other. Completely forgot to put something in between them. It was just a disaster. And I woke up the next morning thinking, oh good, my little book is going to be dry and finished. It's going to be great. It was this warped, mushy <laughs> mess of gesso and glue and I don't know what I was thinking. So I ended up having to rip all of the pages out, the ones that I had glued together and gessoed, let them dry good and um, of course some of them, you know, they'd stuck together so layers had peeled off. It was just awful. So I had to re-gesso everything and I ended up actually really liking how these edges turned out right here. They're just, they're rough and, and awesome, and I love it. And those were the edges from the binding where I ripped them out. So I went through and I made sure that they were all kind of roughed up and, you know, gnarly looking. And I still don't know what I'm going to do with it, but if I end up binding it, I'm pretty sure I'm going to bind it along this edge so that this is the exposed edge, because these are great. And then I'll do something with it. I think it just probably needs to be a... a an art journal for, you know, really wet media, paint and stuff. So I may do that. And I have a bunch more of these pages. They're still drying. I'm still correcting my my weird mistake I made. Um, so we'll see how that turns out. And that is all I have for now, except for my awkward ending. Mm. The end. <laughs>